done it again. I've bought an absolute pile of scrap. I set myself the challenge to try and find the worst condition rider mower, but with the potential of getting the engine running. As far as I'm aware, this has been sat outside for most of its life. Not much left of that. The entire drive system is totally locked up. All the pulleys. It's a four wheel steer and it, that's all, that's all seized. So it really has had it, but will it run? That is the question. I'm gonna be focusing all my efforts onto the engine. If I can get it to a running condition, then I'm gonna say that's gonna be a mission accomplished. Uh, there's no point messing around with this thing, but if we can see this engine run once again, That'd be quite an achievement. There we go, right, the nut is uh, always inserted into these. And as soon as they rust on, it just spins. So you've got to cut away the plastic. I think we're gonna have quite a few sheared bolts today. It looks really clean in there. I'm impressed. So it proves that the cover, the air filter cover has done a really good job at keeping all of the moisture and the dirt out of here. The next job is to remove the top cover. So I don't want any of the dirt to go down here. I'm gonna block it off. Um, we'll see what we can discover underneath there. Right, here we go. There's no oil in the engine, by the way.
Well, there's nothing too surprising under here. The flywheel is uh, rust welded to the, the coil, as usual. This is the third Will It Run Rusty mower video I've done, and all three have been seized onto the coil. So we're gonna have to free that off just to determine whether or not there's internal damage um, or internal seizing. So I'm gonna take the spark plug out, we'll take a look in there with the endoscope and just see the condition of the bore. Looks fairly clean, almost as if somebody has wire brushed it. Okay, so we're just gonna go into the combustion chamber. Directly in front of us, we have the valves. Bit of carbon, bit of corrosion on them, but nothing too unexpected. And this endoscope actually has two cameras on it, so the next one is looking left from the same position, and that is looking into the combustion chamber and you can see we've got plenty of carbon plenty of corrosion uh, the piston is just down there the cylinder watch looks okay so there's definitely nothing obstructing it from this side that would be quite unusual it can still be internally seized but I think yeah I'm happy to uh, to try and turn that engine over by hand. This video isn't sponsored by the way, I just need a lot of uh, lubricating oil. Right, so let's see if we can free this off. I could just attempt to remove the ignition coil. I think I know what the problem is. The deck is all seized up and the belt is actually seized onto the pulley. So if I can remove or cut that belt, that might solve the issue. Okay, good, so that sorted that. Definitely the, uh, the deck, which was holding the engine in place, preventing it from turning over. Uh, so, that is one thing we can tick off the list of potential issues. Next, I'm gonna test the ignition coil. I'm yet to do one of these Willy Run videos and have a working ignition coil. So maybe this can be the first, unlikely though. Uh, I can also test the starter motor. Again, unlikely to be working. Uh, so gonna have to probably fix that or find a good use one. Right, so what we don't want is for it to stay as number one. I'll put the range on the screen now. It's looking likely to be a bad coil, which is no surprise. Yep, okay, so that's gonna to have to be replaced. I'm now gonna to attempt to test the starter motor. I really don't wanna be turning the engine over yet though because it's really corroded. It needs a good clean, but if I do need to get some parts for it, then I need to get them ordered. So I'm just gonna put some power to it and see what it does. It's dead. Now for the tricky part then, removing it. Just a quick tip, something I've picked up from doing these over the years. Um, removing the right hand side first is easier, or you have less chance of shearing it basically, because if you've removed the left hand side, which is easy to access, you can put a socket on it, and then you are struggling with the right hand side, you're gonna put a bit of strain on it and you could just shear it. So I prefer to remove this one first.
yeah, very dry. Penetrating oil always helps. Yeah, so this might be uh, beyond it, but we'll still open it up, we'll have a look inside. Yeah, so I've just ordered some parts for the other starter motor, ones which I'm guessing it's going to need. But I have this one. This is one which I rebuilt about half a year ago. So we'll get that fitted onto there, and then we can continue testing the engine. I think it's unlikely that it's just going to work without cleaning and rebuilding the carburetor. Uh, it's tempting to give it a go. If I have the spark plug out, then any dust that gets sucked through could just blow straight out. I don't think there's really anything in there. It does seem to be quite clean. So that is good, uh, but yeah, let's just get the fitted onto there and we will uh, attempt to turn the engine over. I'm just going to do a quick compression test. You have got to take into account any kind of compression release that your engine might have. Uh, but we should still be looking for 70 psi, 60 psi. Okay, 25. It's interesting. Um, well, I'll follow this up with a leak down test and see what that shows. And we can determine exactly how much cylinder leakage we have. This will pick up faults such as uh, worn valve seats, um, worn piston rings, that sort of thing. So we need to set this to the 0% position. Okay, and then we just plug it into the hose which is going into the cylinder and it would give us a reading. Okay, so that's giving us a reading of about 47, 48% leakage, uh, which isn't good. The air is escaping through the carburetor, but that could be coming through the breather from the crankcase. If it's coming from the, the crankcase, it would be the piston rings that are worn or stuck. Uh, so the only way of really testing this is to block that breather and see if it bubbles up the, uh, the dipstick. Also, lots of aluminium oxide coming out of here. Yeah, the carburetor's gonna need cleaning. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, whoa! Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's going to the crankcase then. So the, uh, the air, the compressed air is getting past the rings into the crankcase and then the only place it can escape from if the breather is blocked is through the dipstick. So all the oil, why did I do it again, comes up. I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but when I pull the tissue paper out, the oil level should decrease. And there we go, it's gone. So possibly a stuck ring, worn rings, or in extreme cases, a worn bore. But yeah, it, it was 47%, so it's not great, but I'm hoping we'll still be able to get it running. I'm continuing regardless of that issue uh, because we've got nothing to lose here. It's good fun. 
so yeah, you can see how much um, aluminium oxide came flying out of the carburetor. Let's get that carburetor removed, if it will remove, and I will get it rebuilt. And the beauty of all this is, even if the engine itself, the internals of the engine have had it, all these external parts, they're all good. If I'm going to restore them, the starter motor, the carburetor, they can be used on other engines. And yeah, putting a new ignition coil on won't matter. I can take it off and I can put it on a different engine after we've done a bit of uh, playing around with this. What do we have here? A gathering of snails. Mm, I think they're... Yeah, I don't think they're alive. Uh, I don't know if the engine's run with them in there. That'd be surprising. It would make them very old. Let's just see. Yeah, they're definitely not alive. Well, if they were in there, I feel sorry for them. Well, here it is, looking very grimy on the outside. On the inside, hard to tell at the moment, but it doesn't look too bad down there. Uh, so it might be surprising. It might actually be quite good internally. Uh, I've got a few linkages that are a bit stiff here, but I can clean up and hopefully it'll look quite good at the end of this. quite a bit of soil. I could grow some flowers in that. Anyway, yeah, I'll take the bowl off and uh, we'll, we'll take a good look inside. Yep, it's looking quite clean. Ah! Rust, probably caused by condensation. Now I'm pleased that I didn't put fuel in it. It's always worth checking. But yeah, I think overall it's not too bad. It does seem to be much better than expected. So uh, yeah, the best approach for that is probably just to put it into the sandblaster and get it cleaned out. Uh, well, the, the best thing to do is to replace the bowl. Uh, but yeah, just trying to get it running. So. Um, I, I will totally clean this thing up, we'll strip it down, rebuild it, and possibly even repaint it as well, because it looks like it's going to be 
at the end of this quite a good carburetor and even if I don't use it on this engine I can put it onto a different one. Well having said that it might be interesting to rebuild this engine if the pulley isn't stuck on the crankshaft. So next up we have the float and the valve. Pin seems to be okay. There's the float. The valve has uh, just fallen off that. But there it is. Doesn't look too bad. Um, and yeah, the rest of it seems pretty good as well. Yeah, everything's looking really good. Some of these parts will have to be replaced, such as this one here. Others, possibly not. There's quite a bit of aluminium oxide. And then we have the emulsion tube just up there. Briggs and Stratton actually do sell a special screwdriver to remove that. I did have one, but it broke. There we go. Yeah, a bit of dirt on there. And we also have the uh, the bowl gasket just here, which will have to be replaced. Okay, so let's get that cleaned up. As you can see, it's looking much better. It has cleaned up quite well. There is still a bit of aluminium oxide, but really the only way of removing everything and making it look perfect is to sandblast it, which I don't really want to do with this carburetor, because this is good enough. So we'll definitely paint it, I'll get it reassembled, and then we'll give it a go. Most parts are okay, I'm not going to replace everything because it's just unnecessary, but I do have the full carb overhaul kit here, part number 394698. In here we have everything that we need, but I'll keep the rest of it for another project. That is our new bowl gasket, and in here we have all the different screws, jets and nozzles, as you can see. So we'll have that, and we'll have that. Everything else can be kept for a later date.
And finally we have the cleaned up carburetor bowl. Big improvement over what it used to be. And also the bowl gasket. Whilst I wait for the carburetor to dry, I'm just going to check under the valve cover and make sure the clearances are okay. It's quite dry in there, something you would expect from an engine which hasn't run for a long time. It's all drained back into the crankcase. So I'm just going to check those clearances. Now the intake valve, which you can't really see very well, needs to be between 5 and 7 thou. 6 goes in perfectly. So it looks like that one is in spec. Just try 7. Yep, 7 doesn't fit. Yeah, it's 6 thou, so that is... Fine, and the exhaust valve wants to be between 9 and 11 thou, so I'll go with 10. Ten fits nicely, and 11 just fits. Can't get 12 in. So both of the valves are within spec. Well, the paint's made it look a bit better. So I'm now gonna refit it to the machine. Uh, we'll change the ignition coil. Well, there we go, the carburetor and the new coil. Yeah, if you're gonna go with, uh, will it run without replacing any parts? The answer is no. Uh, everything has needed work. Starter motor, which we'll be coming on to, 
the coil had to be fully replaced and of course the carburetor needed a bit of work. I've just put a bit of carb spray in it. Let's see if there's any signs of life. Definitely something. If it fires again, I'll take it outside and put some fuel in it. And there we have it, that was actually really impressive, especially when you consider the leak down test results and also the compression test results. It's interesting, it just shows that these engines are fairly indestructible. If you were wanting to see the starter motor being rebuilt, then we will feature it in another video, but I've analyzed it, I've determined which parts are necessary, I've put the parts holder in, but because they're coming from the USA and they're quite rare, they're new old stock, they're gonna be a week and a half to two weeks at least, and I really need to get this out of the way because I have another big project coming up. I need the space, I don't have much space anyway. It's really tight in here. Um, so yeah, maybe one day I'll be able to get a bigger workshop, but for now, we are gonna have to leave this video here. Uh, if you were wanting to see that starter motor being rebuilt, 
I did actually do it in a, in a previous video. I'll put the uh, the link at the top right corner of the screen. A little icon should be there. So you can click on that if you want to. I do also need to do an update on the Westwood D200. So I might also uh, rebuild the starter motor in that same video. It can be a little update video of all the different things that are happening. But as I said, I need to get this one out. I need to get the next one in. Uh, things are starting to move faster again now. You will have also noticed that the uh, pulleys were going round for the transmission. I was surprised. So I looked into it and I found out that this lever here, which is forward and reverse, is completely seized. It goes right into the gearbox, all seized up. No chance of moving that. And also the speed selector there has completely snapped. So you can't even adjust the, um, the variable pulley in there. So unfortunately, we're not gonna see this driving, but I didn't think we would do. And the deck is just like soil. It's just disintegrating. Uh, it would be it would be stupid to try and start it up. Not that I can do anyway. It's all seized as well. All the spindles. Uh, so we are going to leave this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And also a huge thank you to everybody who has supported me on Patreon. We'll leave it here. I'll see you in the next project.